Is engineering college a scam or is it actually the best investment that you'll ever make in your life? In this video, I'll go over why people think it's a scam, why people think it's worth it, and I'll cover a couple alternative paths that you may consider in this journey. First of all, yes, the costs are definitely rising and it's not what it was 10 or even 20 years ago. It is much more expensive now to go to an engineering school, public, certainly private, than it was before. There are promises that I keep seeing being made to young engineers or would-be engineers that as soon as they graduate school, they've been making a six-figure job. And that's simply not true most of the time. It really depends on your environment, where you live, what industry you're in, what major you received, etc., etc. So while that does happen, that's not normal. And so there might be a bit of a letdown when it comes time for the payoff. And some people have experienced that. That's why they voice their opinion that college is therefore a scam. The key to remember, though, is that the ROI or return on investment for your engineering degree is not immediate. It takes time for you to build up your skills, build up your experience, your know-how, to begin to lead projects, to get into those higher up roles, where of course then the pay is significantly better. And that is when it starts to make sense and the payoff is good. That typically takes about five or 10 years for it to get really good, depending on what industry you're in and what you're doing, of course. Another issue that I'm seeing is that certain schools are just teaching outdated info. And that's probably true across the board, just because it's hard for schools to keep up with everything that's going on, but certain ones are a lot worse at this than others. And the material may not prepare you for an engineering job. The truth is though, that you're always gonna have to learn a lot more on the job than you did in school. The part that's important to remember is in school, you're being taught kind of a wide berth of things, right? You're not going too deep into any significant topic unless of course you go to your master's or your PhD. So it's all about breadth in school, but then when you get into your career, it's more about depth. However, when people first start out, their initial reaction is, I never learned any of this in school. Why did I even go to electrical engineering school or mechanical engineering school? That wasn't taught to me. It's all about you understanding enough of the principles, though, that can be applied then for your employer and your industry to teach you what you need to know. Another reason why people think it's a scam is because, let's just be honest, engineering is tough. The dropout rates are pretty high, and you really have to be committed and have a lot of grit to be able to get through. Man. So now imagine if you are you did your first, second, third year, you almost got to your fourth year. Maybe you even finished, you know, halfway through your fourth year and then you drop out. Well, guess what? Now you don't have a degree and you're left with a ton of debt. And there are people in that scenario, which is really unfortunate. But the key thing to remember is if you're going to commit to it, it's going to be a four year commitment and you can reap the rewards when you finish, but do not drop out. Whatever, Do whatever you got to do to not drop out. If personal things happen, that's one thing. But if you can control it, then try to stay in and just stomach it and get through it. Okay. You'll notice that you'll build some momentum towards the end. You'll get excited about it because you're diving into classes that you want to take. So so do not drop out because yes, you're definitely going to think that college engineering is a scam if you do because you're going to have a lot of debt with nothing to show for it. Now, the good stuff. Why it's not a scam. Once you become an engineer, you have tremendous job security. Certain industries in particular are really going to stand out here. Things like power, software, construction, just things that are needed, especially if you're looking at building infrastructure. Those types of projects are always going to be in demand. So once you become an engineer, you have tons of potential for job security and once you build up your skills, you're probably never going to have to worry about not being able to find a job. Secondly, and probably the most obvious is your earning potential is going to skyrocket. If it took you four years to get your engineering degree and it costs you $150,000, well, guess what? In the near future, at some point, you're gonna be able to earn that much money in a single year. And then imagine working for 25, 30, 40 years, you can do the math and see how that's gonna add up. So your earning potential over a lifetime, as the statistics show, is true. You're gonna earn significantly more if you went and got your four-year degree than if you did something else. You're investment will pay back many times over. Something else too that's not really talked about much is that once you go through and pass all these engineering classes, you have a lot of transferable skills that can lead you to other industries even. I know a couple of friends who are now working on the business side of things. They ended up getting their MBAs and now they're either in procurement or they're in management or heck, some of them are even in finance and venture capital. One of the most potent combos is even getting into law and doing patents. There are so many different variations and you don't know what your life and career could look like in 10 years, but engineers are in demand. It doesn't matter what you're doing in engineering, but if somebody knows that you're an engineer, there's a lot of pressure 
athletes teach to that, right? They know that you've gone through this gauntlet, you've made it through, and you can work, you can solve problems. That's why some of the world's best entrepreneurs are engineers. So it's a massive stepping stone potentially into other opportunities and careers that you don't even think about right now when you're just starting out your career or if you're in college right now. It's worth mentioning that there are some key alternatives that are certainly worth considering. So one of them is just going to community college and getting a two-year degree. So you don't have to become an engineer. If you get your two-year degree in a technical subject, then you can become what's known as a designer. And certain industries, that's very valued. I, for one, work in the power industry as a hiring manager. I got my electrical engineering degree. I got my master's in electrical engineering. A lot of the folks that I work with are not engineers. They are designers, meaning they've got a two-year degree and are able to work on projects. The way to view them is if the engineer is, let's say, like a doctor at a, at a hospital, these designers are like nurse practitioners, right? So they don't, not the ones that sign off on anything, they don't have their names on the drawings, but they know a lot, if not as much as the engineers, and they are very valued and respected and can earn a very, very nice income as well. So something to consider, a two-year technical degree. Of course, there are the trade schools. So in this example, if we're looking at electrical, a great alternative is to become an electrical Electrician. Now those guys are very well respected. They work with their hands. They make very good money, especially if they own their own company. They might even make more than the engineers that they work with. Electricians and trade schools are not to be overlooked. In this landscape, a lot of people are looking at sort of quote unquote the blue collar option and it is a great idea. Not everybody should go to engineering school. If you do have some desire to do something technical, it doesn't mean it's gotta be a four year. Last thing I wanna say though is you will not be able to get hired on as an engineer without going to college, or at least that's very, very difficult to do that. So that is sort of a requirement, and that is typical across the board. Is engineering college a scam? It depends on what your goals are and how you go into it. If you know exactly what you're looking for and understand the pros and cons to each one, then it's not a scam. It's just an educated decision. Let me know in the comments if you didn't choose to go to engineering school, and if you went to school, and what your experiences are. Do you feel like it was worth it? Did you get ripped off? What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear it. 